some general information about Patmos. I told you before that Patmos is a small island. Patmos is the northern island of the Dodecanese. It's called in Greek Dodecanisos. Dodeca is a Greek word for 12, and Nisos means islands, because Dodecanisos means 12 islands. It's a group of 12 islands. The biggest island from the Dodecanese is Rhodes, and Patmos is the northern island. Small island is only 34 square kilometer. The longest distance south to the north is about 12 and a half kilometer, and we have three main towns. If you look now here to the right side, you have the few to the biggest town, the poor town, Scala. In Scala, we have all kinds of shops. All the facilities are there. And we have the smallest town in the north of the, uh, the island. It's called Cambos. And if you look now, in one second to the left side, you can see on top of the hill, mm. the capital town, Cora, the white houses from Cora, mm. and the big gray building in the middle. This is a monastery of St. John. Mm -hmm. It looks a little bit like a fortress or like a castle, but it was always a Greek Orthodox monastery. And we have also the theological school, the oldest theological school in Greece we have here in Patmos. They started in the year 1713, that means more as 300 years ago, more as 300 years ago they started with the theological school. The school is called Patmiada. In Patmos we have 3,000 inhabitants and the main source of income here is tourism. About 70 to 75 percent from the families here, they live from tourism and the rest from a little bit fishing or a little bit agriculture. So, and now information about the capital town, Kora. The oldest houses here in Kora were are built very close to the monastery. They were built in the 16th, 17th and in the 18th century. And they are all natural stone houses. In the year 1956, we had an earthquake in Greece. It took place in Santorin. And also parts here from Patmos were destroyed, also here from Kora. This was the reason, at this time, in the year 1956, the families here, they lived from fishing or from agriculture. Not all the families had the money to repair or to build a house again after the earthquake. And this was the reason that here in Kora, some families, they started to sell the traditional houses here in Kora to rich foreigners, to rich Greek people from the mainland. Many families from here, they emigrate at this time to the States. In all Patmos, also many families, they emigrate to Australia. The positive side. The new owners, they bought the traditional houses here. They had the money to repair or to build them again. And they have done it in the same way like they were before. And now the town Hora, the monastery of St. John, and the Monastery of the Apocalypse are declared from the UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. islands around us. The big island to the left side is the island Ikaria. Maybe you know about Icarus, came too close to the sun and put down yeah. in the sea. So this ancient this part of the ancient sea is called Ikarios Pelagos because of Ikaria. A little bit more to the right we have the island Furni and behind the Cambos, the high mountain we see, this is the island Samos. Quite good today, the view from here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we start. The stones are from Patmos. Stones we have a lot, but almost all the rest we have to import. So all the houses here are built with the stones, like you can see here, mm -hmm. but after they are plastered and whitewashed. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the year 1088, the monk in Sormos, he came here because he wanted to build a monastery. For this reason, he went first to Constantinople. He spoke with Alexius Komnenos I. He granted the whole island to monks. So, yes, so, so in 1088, the monks came here with monks, workers from the mainland, from Asia Minor. And, and they started here to build the monastery. At the same time, they built also the church next to the cave. In only three years, they built the outer walls from the monastery, around 50 meters high, to protect themselves from pirate attacks. 
In the three years they built the outer walls, the main church that is here behind me, the refectory, the kitchen and five cisterns. Cisterns they had to build to collect the rainwater in the window. So The founder of the monastery in Hora, his name was Christodlos. He is a founder, he was a monk, and he came here to build the monastery. Did he oh. build the monastery? In 1088. New information. <laughs> okay. First of all, here in Hora, Hora is the monastery of St. John, is not the highest hill from Patmos. Here, Hora is 180 meters high. The highest hill from Patmos is in the south part of the island, 200. 30 yeah. meters, and on top of this hill there is also a church, the church for Prophet Elias. Prophet Helias is normally always built on the highest peak from the land. It's celebrated on the 20th of July. But now also the information about the traditional windmills. You saw the windmills when we went up to the monastery. The, the windmills, they belong to the monastery and they were built in the 16th century. They were used for flour. After the earthquake in 1956, also the windmills were destroyed. And a few years they restored them again. One is restored, so we use it again for flour. And the other two, this is a plan, maybe for the future we can use them for electricity. Mm -hmm. But a little bit I will come back to the churches again. First of all, also houses in Hora, some of the traditional old houses here in Hora, they include her own private church. When you walk in the narrow streets in this wonderful town, from the outer world, it's not possible to see if there's a church behind or if it's a normal house. This is only possible when you are a little bit higher and you can look to the roofs. The house has always a flat roof and the church has a round roof. So then you can see which house includes also a church. And now I have one question for you. I told you before we have 3,000 inhabitants, <coughs> three main towns, and uh, 34 square kilometer. Do we have an idea how many chapels and church we have here in the Highland? How many chapels and church? When I say a chapel, I mean a smaller church. Do you have an idea? Not sure again. Okay, I was not here. Around 400 here on the island. Mm -hmm. They are all Greek Orthodox, and uh, it's also possible to have private a church here in Patmos. This is the reason that also some private houses they have a church here. A reason that a family wants to build a church can be, for example, if somebody died very young in the family. This can be a reason that a family wants to build a church. Each church has a name from a holy person, and when we celebrate the name day from the church, then we have church service. Also in the private church, the monk or the priest, they go there. The family informs all the relatives, all the friends and uh, to come to the church service and the wonderful tradition that we have here on the island is that after the church service they serve coffee to the people that means not everybody runs immediately at home so they stay together they drink coffee they speak together they enjoy this time really very very much so this is a really nice feeling patmos declared as a holy island means also that the monastery takes care and for example in patmos it's not allowed to build higher as three floors and this means also for the future, Patmos will not change very much. It will be also in the future a typical Greek island. Typical also for the island is that uh, the houses are white here and also typical that almost all the houses here, they have flat roofs. The reason why? We still do it like many centuries before. We still collect the rainwater from the roof. We have a pipeline under our house and each house has its own private water system, its own private water reservoir. And then with an electric motor, with a pump, we can use the water we have collected in the window, we can use in our house. But of course, this is not enough for all the season. So till uh, two years ago, we bought water from other islands. So they bring us water from the island roads and we bought it. And now, two years ago, we started here with a desalination. And this, of course, it's much, much better for us because now we have our own water here. This is very important. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in Scala. Now I want to show you. 
straight ahead is the center from Skala. Go for a walk. Believe me, it's a wonderful little town. There are wonderful shops. Go for a walk. You, everything is very close together here. The entrance to the harbor is here on the side. And there are the shuttle boats. And whenever you want to go back, you come here and they bring you back to the boat. 